Hey guys, how's it going? It's Erin from This Limeade Stand here with an adventure in reactivating slimes. Guys, slime does not necessarily need to be a perishable product if you take really good care of it. Now, that's not to say that I personally take really good care of my slimes. In fact, I found some slimes that are pretty much completely liquefied, sadly. So I thought it would be a fun day to um, show you how to reactivate your slimes. You don't just have to make a slime smoothie out of them. You don't have to toss them in the trash. It's really easy to reactivate slimes that are completely liquefied. So today we are going to take some slimes from essentially glue to a delectable snack and a couple of easy steps with some really simple ingredients that you probably already have if you make slime at home. And I'm gonna show you how to do it, okay? Now, I tried to find the oldest slimes I could find in my house. Now, sadly, I cleaned out my slime drawers just a month ago. Then I discovered my secret bedtime slime stash, which included some slimes from Parakeet Slimes, Slime Bobble, Sleazy Slime, Area 51 Slime, and the one and only Slime City Bee. Um, these are slimes I do not want to toss in the trash. I want to keep playing with them. So we are going to reactivate these beautiful babies and basically return them to as good as new condition. Now, before we do that, I feel a little compelled to tell you that one of these days, guys, I'm gonna be dropping some secret recipes on you here on this YouTube channel of mine. So you're gonna want to subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button down there. Leave me a few comments. Leave me some constructive criticism. Tell me how sweet my hair is looking today. Whatever you feel like doing. Make sure you're subscribing so you're getting post notifications so you know when I post so you don't miss anything awesome. Um, and then without further ado, let's dive in to this adventure that I'm gonna call my slime reactivation journey. Are you guys ready? Because I am and I can't wait to play with my six new slimes back here. Let's do it. So let's get into the slimes we're going to be reactivating today. I have a handful of slimes here that are essentially ancient artifacts in slime years. I have two slimes here from Slime City B that still have her holiday logo on them, which would make them about anywhere from eight to 10 months old at this point. I have a slime here from Sleazy Slime, which I know I received as a review back in February or March, which would make it about seven to eight months old. I have a slime from Parakeet Slimes that I received in the spring, which would make it about six months old. And I have two Valentine Slimes, one from Slime Bobble and one from Area 51 Slimes, which are each about eight months old. So we're going to open these up. We're going to check out what condition they're in and see if we can't get them back to brand new condition. So let me tell you what you need to get started. Okay, so the first item you're going to need is a 9 by 12 or an 11 by 13 inch glass baking dish. And the reason I prefer to work with glass over plastic is that the slime doesn't stick to the glass as much as it would a plastic surface. And the size of this baking dish allows you plenty of surface area to work with. The edges on it help contain any spillage or leakage you'll have with a liquefied slime. And it gives you plenty of space to work with when you're trying to reactivate it. Next, you're going to need some powdered borax, and this is my preferred slime activator. It's a perfectly safe method. You're only going to need about a half a teaspoon of powdered borax, and you can find this at the grocery store in the detergent section, or you can order it online. So you're gonna dissolve your half teaspoon of borax in one cup or 250 milliliters of hot water. You'll stir it up until the borax is completely dissolved. You don't wanna see any borax crystals visible in your water. This is a pretty weak activation solution. It's the same activation solution I use for my clear slimes. You don't wanna use anything too strong when you're activating a slime that has already been activated. I prefer to put my activation solution in a squirt bottle like this one so I can be more accurate with it when I'm using it, but you can use any container that you prefer. Next, it's on to one of my very favorite slime making ingredients, and that is vegetable glycerin. 
This is a must have for any slime maker. You can use it in any type of slime, including clear slime. And it's essentially a super powered lotion. It's great for softening up your slime, making it nice and stretchy. It's great for over activation mistakes. If you've added too much activating, your slime's a little rubbery. It's a perfect method for softening it up. So I always like to have this on hand when I'm reactivating any of my old slimes. You can find vegetable glycerin at any craft store. I found this one at Hobby Lobby, but it's also available online. You can also also find it from any soap or candle making supply store. So as you can see, I've just added it to a smaller container here so I can be more accurate with it. You won't need very much. I've got a little eyedropper here so that I can add it accurately to any slime that I overactivate. And we'll have this on hand here for when we're ready to start reactivating our old slimes. Okay, so getting right into it, let's start with my mango mouse cheese from Parakeet Slimes. And again, this is about six to seven months old. It is what looks to be completely liquefied, but let's test that out. Yep, it's totally deactivated, which is, again, totally normal for a slime this age. I do remember loving this slime. It hasn't lost any of its amazing mango scent. I'm just gonna dump it out here. And we're gonna add a little activator to the jar itself. Swirl it around a little bit. We're gonna pat it with our fingers a little bit. Just kind of lightly so you don't make a huge mess. Add a little more to the slime itself. And don't worry about adding too much. That's what the glycerin is going to be for later. So you're going to just slowly fold the slime into a little pile here, just carefully doing it with your fingertips because it is obviously going to be sticky. It's going to have a consistency of glue because it's, you know, made with glue. So I'm going to just massage the activator into my underactivated slime here until it reaches a very heavily activated consistency. Okay, so we are now at the point that most people would consider over activated. The slime is extremely thick. It's very difficult to stretch. It is very heavily activated, but it is no longer liquefied. So that is a good thing. This is where we want our slime to be when we're reactivating it. So our next step is to use our magical vegetable glycerin. We are going to add our vegetable glycerin a dropper at a time, because remember, it's very, very concentrated. I'm going to add the equivalent of about a half a teaspoon to my six ounce mango mouse cheese, and I'm gonna massage it in very slowly and stretch the slime until it reaches the consistency that I want it to be. When you first add it, the slime will feel slightly tacky. This is normal. You just want the slime to absorb the glycerin until it reaches a consistency that feels stretchy and soft. This is absolutely perfect. It's stretchy, it's thick, it's glossy, it makes the best bubble pops, and it's even better than the day I got it. I am in love. So now that we have those steps down, let's reactivate our other slimes and see where we get with those.
you guys, I am so excited about my brand new slimes. I hope you enjoyed watching me on my reactivation journey. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can catch my next video. Have a great week, guys. I'll see you next time.